Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Today, we will be doing something a little different from our usual reviews. We have a new watch to unbox and give some first impressions. This watch comes from a brand that would not normally be on my radar, Trebus. Trebus is a brand started by a man named Christopher Ward, who also created the very successful micro brand of his namesake. The reason I was alerted to this watch is because of a video made here on YouTube by Chris over at Watch Chris, talking about a 70% off sale that the brand was having just a few weeks ago. In this sale, the price of this watch was reduced from around $2,000 to just $600. And what did that $600 get me? It got me a fully automatic, COSC certified chronometer GMT watch with a power reserve indicator, housing a Swiss made Soprod movement. For that price, I think it's almost impossible to go wrong. We can see that the box has been fairly well packed during shipping, but unfortunately on one corner of the box there is a little bit of damage. Hopefully that won't extend any further than the outer box itself. On the side of the box here we can see the model number, TRI03, as well as the colour configuration of my watch. It seems that the box has been glued shut, so there's no easy way to open it. Inside that box, there is yet another box, wrapped in a plastic bag. On the top of this box is the Trevis logo, in a bright orange colour, which, I believe, the brand uses quite often. It looks like the box must have taken quite a significant bump during shipping, as this box too has some slight damage on that same corner there. And we have yet another box, this time surrounded by a thin layer of foam to protect it. Anyone who has ever unboxed a mid-range watch and up will know that there is always another box inside the box. This one, however, feels much more solid. It is made of wood, and we can see the Trebus logo again, in gloss this time, on the top of the box. This creates a very nice effect, as it is only visible when it catches the light and contrasts nicely with the matte finish of the rest of the box. The presentation of this box is quite nice, and although it will just end up going into a cupboard eventually, it's something you would expect from a watch with the original price of this one. Also on the bottom of the box, we can see that it's covered in felt, a nice touch. Inside, we can finally see the watch itself, but first, we have a little bit of paperwork to look through. First, we have the warranty card, with instructions to register your warranty online. It's nice to see a three-year warranty when many other micro brands offer only one or maybe two years at a maximum. In here, we also have the paperwork relating to the COSC certification, showing what I assume are the results of the testing required to pass that certification. This means that the watch is guaranteed to run between minus four and plus six seconds per day. We'll soon also see that the chronometer label is also on the dial. Also in this box is this little pin pusher which I believe is used to operate the pusher that controls the GMT function of the watch, though I probably won't be using it as a metal instrument may risk scratching the case. Now we can move on to the watch itself. Attached to the back is this little Trebus branded hang tag. As you can see, I purchased the gold case, cream dial and black strap combination. Partially, because there were only limited options left when I bought mine, but also because I liked the cream dial. There was also a black dial version available at the time. The finishing around the case is very well done, with finely brushed surfaces and a small polished chamfered edge running the length of the case. At the top of the dial, we can see the power reserve indicator and the 6 o'clock subdial is the GMT hand. I really like the colour of the cream dial, 
this watch clearly has a vintage aesthetic going, and the cream colour really sets that off. The crown, signed with the Trebus logo, is actually a screw-down crown, and gives this watch an impressive 150 metres of water resistance. Here we can also see the recessed pusher for the GMT function that lets this watch display two different time zones at once. A chunky but nicely polished buckle is also branded. Back to the front of this watch, we can see that the minute track running around the edge of the dial is quite nicely distorted by the curved sapphire crystal. Let's put some wind into the movement and get this watch running now. The crown unscrews very smoothly, so smoothly that I wasn't even sure at first if it was screwed in at all. Once unscrewed, the crown pops out quite far from the case. As I'm winding, you can see the needle on the power reserve indicator slowly going up. This is a complication not seen very often on watches, and I've mainly only seen them on Japanese watches, such as Orient's and of course Grand Seiko Spring Drives. Let's get that dial sticker peeled off, so we can get a much clearer look at the dial. As you can see, the anti-reflective coating is working very well to cut down on reflections from the lights. Both the Christopher Ward brand and this Trebus share an interesting design choice, and that's about the location of the brand logo on the dial. I don't mind the 3 o'clock position on this watch, as it reminds me a lot of the IWC Portuguesa, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, most other brands choose to either place the brand logo at the 12, or sometimes 6 o'clock. I'm not a huge fan of the way that the watch was wrapped around the holder in the box. Sitting so long around this holder, the strap has been moulded into that shape. It will probably take quite a while wearing this to get it worked out of that shape and into a more flat one. With the watch up, we can finally see the movement powering it. This movement features some very nice finishing, with collage on some of the movement plates and a Trebus branded rotor. We can also see the balance of the watch spinning away through the display case back. Around the case back is the usual spec sheet list. However, one difference that sets this watch apart is the one that says COSC certified chronometer. The brand also decided to stamp its logo into the underside of the leather strap, which is a nice touch. Now, let's get it on wrist and see how it wears. With a case size of 41mm, it sounds big, but actually sits quite well on my 7 inch wrist. Being a fairly thick watch, at over 12mm, it does sit a little bit high, but the curved bezel and crystal help it to feel slimmer than it actually is. So, the first impressions of this watch are good. It's very well finished and feels solidly made. The dial colour is a definite standout for me. Keep an eye out for a future review of this piece on the channel. And until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.